Hi friends, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and country cook Steve Hall back aboard the beautiful Miss Sheila houseboat. Well, we're, today we're going to teach you how to can venison. You're going to love this. In fact, a lot of guys can their entire deer at the end of the season because it's so versatile. You can use it in barbecue, you can use it in stroganoff, and a lot of great recipes. First, you need a pressure cooker canner. When I say pressure cooker canner, because you can buy a small pressure cooker to put meat in, pressure cook, but a canner has a little aluminum plate in the bottom of it that holds your jars up off the bottom so they don't jiggle around on the bottom when it's boiling when you're building pressure in there for steam to can your venison. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the pressure cooker in just a little bit, but first I'm going to tell you how we're going to load up our jars and get ready to can our venison. I've cubed up a bunch of venison here and you can, you can use just about any part of the deer. That's what I really like about it. You know those front legs or front shoulders of the deer that you, some guys throw them away because you can't really cut them into a steak. Uh, they don't really make good stew meat because they're too tough. When you pressure cook them front shoulders and front legs on a venison in the jars in a pressure cooker, it softens all of that stuff up to where every chunk of meat just melts in your mouth, even with the little tendons in it. Of course, cut most of the tallow off the meat. Cube your venison up in one inch cubes get about, well, we're, in this case, we're only going to do five pints today, even though this 12 quart, quart cooker will hold seven pints. And I always can, always can venison in pints, unless you got a big group at your house. If you don't eat up all the venison, you put it in the refrigerator. I hate to waste venison. It kind of dries out and you never get a chance to use it. So I always can everything in pint jars. I got my venison cubed up here in one inch cubes. We got our jars out of a hot water bath, so we sterilize them and make sure that they're nice and clean. We want to fill each one of these jars half full. Now you can get a little funnel to put in here, make it a little more convenient, but I'm going to wipe the top of these lids down, or the top of these jars down anyway, to make sure that my little lids seal on there. So you want to fill them about half full of meat. Now this is a 12 quart pressure cooker canner and it'll hold seven pints. I'm only going to do five today just for the recipe. But this stuff is so good when it gets done and it's so versatile you can use it in so many different recipes that I just love canning venison. And I'll tell you something, for those of you that learn how to can venison, you don't have to use a freezer. You put this stuff on the shelf, it doesn't require freezing. It'll last for, I have eight canned venison that is two to three years old believe it or not, and it just keeps and keeps and keeps. I guess I don't know what the limit is on how long it would last, but it usually don't last at our house over about six months, but I want to put a little bit of canning salt in here. Now, if you don't have canning salt or can't find it in some of your stores, just use salt that does not have iodine in it. It can't have iodine in for canning. So you can use canning salt, and that's just simply salt with no iodine. They don't tell you that, but that's what it is. You can buy them both in the store. It just says right on here, this salt does not supply iodine. That's what you want. You put a half a teaspoon of what I call the canning salt in each one of these jars when it's half full. Now if you're using quart jars, and again I don't use the can in quart jars because I use smaller amounts which are perfect for recipes, you put a full teaspoon of canning salt in. Now at this point you can put in a little dash of pepper or I use Cajun seasoning. It just kind of rounds out the flavor, but I just put a little sprinkle in each one of these jars here. Then we're going to pack the meat back on top. Okay, then in just a second we're going to pour a little beef broth in here. And that's going to give us a little bit of liquid in the bottom. We don't need much, but just a little bit of liquid in the bottom here. We're going to pack these jars in pretty good. All right. You can get a lot of meat down in these little pint jars. You'd be surprised how many pounds of meat you can do in one pressure cooker at a time. I'm telling you, in this crazy world we're living in, there's nothing better than to have tons and tons of jars of canned meat down in your pantry 
that you can whip into a great recipe at any time that requires no electricity to keep it for many, many years. That's what I like about canned venison. And, oh, stuff is like candy. All right, we got that in there. Then we're going to take a little bit of beef broth, put that in on top of here. Just about a, oh, I guess about a tablespoon in each one of them. It helps bring the level of the fluid back up. Now this stuff's going to make its own juice as it cooks in the pressure cooker. Okay, this one could use just a little more meat. So can this one. It just seems like you can just keep packing it in there. And it disappears. Now you want to stop about a half inch from the top. When you can't get any more meat in there and it's about a half inch down from the top, that's perfect. All right. That one's got maybe one too many. Now you want to take a paper towel and clean the top rim of every one of these jars. That's to keep that residue from getting in between there and that little rubber seal that's in the lid and then it won't seal. Now here's a, here is one other tip, let me tell you. If you do get one that doesn't seal, it's still cooked and it's still delicious. Don't throw it away. Just use it up that night in a recipe or pop it in the refrigerator and use it over the next couple of days. It's not ruined because it didn't seal. It just didn't seal to keep for a long time. Then, after you get your jars wiped down on top, this is so easy to can venison. You take your lids out of your hot, hot water, set them on top, each one of these jars. little rubber seal now is soft from the hot water, see? And that, that'll press down on there when you put the rings on top of it. Okay. Now here's the magic thing. When you spin them down, first of all, get them all set. Just kind of finger very, very lightly. Kind of set them on there. Now you don't want to reef on these things. This one here is fighting me. There we go. You don't want to reef on these things, but you don't want to just leave them gently. Give them a little bit of a snug. Each one, just gently snug it. It will not blow up in the pressure cooker. Even though it's gently snug, everything that boils in there will release itself. Then when it cools, right now, I don't know if you can hear that sound. Let me get that next to my mic. You hear that? Let me show you something. I've got a jar that's already canned. Where's my jar that's already canned? Here comes my little assistant. Hi, babe. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Now, this is a jar that's already been canned. It's done. You notice all the liquid that's in there. A little bit of fat in there from the meat. But listen, nothing. It has sucked itself down. In fact, you can actually, I never do, but you can actually store them like this without the ring because it's sealed around there. You don't need the keeper ring. You can use that to keep sealing other jars and you only have to buy lids. Some people will do that, but I kind of like to leave it on there, but this one's good to go. And when you unseal the top, shh, you'll hear that pressure seal. Then you know you got a good can. If you ever pull this off the shelf and it goes like this and pops up and down like that oil can sound, it's bad. Don't eat it. Throw it away. But if it's sealed where it's sucked down like that, perfect. It's ready to eat and it's like candy. Now I, I'll tell you, some of the guys up at the hunting camp, they'll take this and smash it into a barbecue sauce and put it on a, on a bun and take it out to the deer stand. It's great. Uh, a buddy of mine in, in northern Minnesota goes ice fishing a lot and he dips water out of the lake, sits it on top of his stove, opens one of these jars, sits it on there and lets it heat up and makes sandwiches out in the fish house. Oh, this stuff is so good. And one of the first things I ever had in my life that had canned venison was a buddy of mine named Donnie Payne. He took me hunting way, many, many, I was about 18 years old. And he made this with like a brown gravy in the morning and poured it over pancakes. Oh, it was absolutely to die for. This is good stuff. All right, we got our pint jars loaded with meat. We got our salt in there all sealed up on top. Make sure you wipe those rims down so that little rubber seal does seal when they cool down. Remember, we got to have the cooker that does have the rim in the bottom. Put in our five jars. And you want to put your water in after you put your jars in. 
because if you put water in and put the jars in, it's the wrong level. Put your water in up to the bottom of this metal rim. Too much water, it takes too long to come to a steam. Not enough water, it will run out of water during the cooking process. Pressure cookers operate differently at different times in different parts of the country. I know that sounds crazy, but if you're in Denver, let's say, at mile high, it is either shorter cooking time or longer cooking time, and your co-op has some books on that. But anything from Minnesota clear down to Louisiana, down the middle of the United States where everything's about 500 feet above sea level, 90 minutes on points, an hour and 45 minutes on quarts. Once we get the jars in there, fill the water up to that little collar right there. Then we're set. And before we put the lid on, we want to put in one tablespoon of vinegar. And what that does in your water, and what that does, it gets rid of that filmy, kind of scummy look on the outside of jars when they're done canned. It'll get kind of a white film on the lids and the side of the jars. If you'll just dump a tablespoon of vinegar in there in your water, not only does it smell good cooking in the kitchen, but it'll eliminate all that film. We put our pressure cooker lid on top. Make sure that your little seal is in place here. Set it down on there, lock it in place, and remove the weight. We want it to purge. When you, cook a when you start up a pressure cooker and you get it going, as it builds and boils, it'll start to come to a steam. You don't want the lid sitting on there while it's trying to push out unsteamed air, if that makes any sense. Once you see the steam start to come out, Make sure you get a mitt, so you have a mitt before you stick your hand over that steam and pop it on there. Now pressure cookers, if you've never used one before, they make all kinds of sounds and they spit and it sounds like an old steam engine trying to get ready to get going at the tracks and they'll bubble and water will run down the side. It's just building pressure and bubbling until it seals and once it seals, there's a little red pin. I don't know if you can get a shot of this, Tim, but there's a little red pin right here. And as the pressure builds, that pin will come up. That's it right there. You see it wiggling? And once this locks in place, once it locks the lid in place, then it really comes up high. And if you see that up, that means it's finely sealed. And it'll take a while to do it with all that little and all them different sounds. They are kind of weird sounding pressure cookers are, but once it finally seals the red pin cup, then it'll quiet down, but you'll still hear it boiling in there. And nothing's going to happen for about 30 to 40 minutes on high heat. Crank it wide open when you first set it on there. Make sure you got your water up to the collar, got your little dash of vinegar in there, everything's sealed up, and about 30 minutes later you f hear the beginning of and it'll start that wonderful sound that you'll hear every fall. If you ever can venison, you'll do it every fall. Once that starts, reduce your heat immediately to about 7 if it's a 1 to 10 setting, about medium high. And then eventually, over the next 10 minutes, you'll turn it right down to about the middle setting, about 5, about medium. And this, what you want for the perfect, as I call it, is about every 10 seconds. About every five to ten seconds, I should say. I just kind of counted it myself there. And you'll let that do that. And that just tells you that it is under pressure to whatever the weight is on top. Now, if you've got one of the old style pressure cookers that has the three holes, it's got five, ten, and fifteen, put it on fifteen pounds. I always cooked everything on fifteen, so. And then when you hear that, for the first time, look at your watch. As soon as you hear it doing that sound, and I gotta do that because I love to do that anyway. 90 minutes later, turn off your burner, completely turn it off, and leave it alone. I love to can in the evening, shut it off, and go to bed. Get up the next morning, everything's cooled down, everything's safe, you can pop it open, pull your jars out. It's just absolutely incredible how it makes its own juice, it tenderizes all the meat, and the after fact that you, you, you can open that up and make the most delicious anything out of canned venison. It'll say in a pressure cooker booklet that you can pour cold water over the top of it to help reduce it. Don't do that. And whatever you do, after you turn it off, don't pull this weight off of here. If you jerk it off, not only will steam fly out, you might scald yourself, but all the jars inside will purge. They'll blow all their liquid out, all the juice out. It'll be a mess in there. So the best thing is 90 minutes after it, turn it off and leave it alone until it's cool. Open it up. When you pull it out, you'll have five jars in there. Here's your canned venison. 
I love to hear that little <coughs> as they seal in the pressure cooker. When it's nice and cooled down, you'll be able to pull them out of there. Keep this on your shelf for a good year, two years. Don't need refrigeration. And it's wonderful. Try this. The next time you get some deer, use the front shoulders, hind quarters, all of it. Can it up in some pints and you will love it for all your recipes. Is it the best tasting venison you ever ate? Can venison? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall saying see you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Cooking with Shotgun Red. If you enjoy our recipes, become a subscriber to our cooking channel and you'll be the first to know when a new recipe is posted. We'll see you next time and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. This is Shotgun Red saying thanks a lot.